When Andy fakes a packet with Leah's address, this packet comes on interface one, and then I would take the source address and I would do a table lookup, and I would see that the packet should actually be coming on interface two. And based on this mismatch between the real interface and the expected interface, I would say this packet is spoofed and I would filter it out. If at any point you have a question, feel free to interrupt me. You don't have to wait until the end. So you see that here I'm lucky because I'm doing filtering at this router that can distinguish between Andy's and Leah's path. And if I, do, if I did my filtering instead on a router that is close to Danny, then paths from Andy and Leah would be the same and I wouldn't be able to filter out spoof packets. So it really matters where I do my filtering, how much I, I'm able to filter. So Kehong Park's work said, yeah. Or not, but I just have a small question. On what system are you implementing this route-based filtering? Are you implementing on a router? It would be on a router, and um, as I go through my talk, you will see that actually routers in the core that have a lot of neighbors, they are the best points to implement that. But say, for example, that I spoof the IP address of a host machine, like this machine. Now, this machine is connected to a switch. Mm -hmm. Switch in turn is connected to the router. The router will store the address of the switch. Mm -hmm. So if you filter it on the router, but the source address, I mean like I have spoofed the source address mm -hmm. and not the IP address of the switch. Yeah. So then? Um, so I'm, I'm not sure I'm following your example, but I guess you're asking what happens with subnet spoofing and subnet spoofing will not be distinguishable by route-based yeah. filtering. So you will be able, you within Purdue will be able to spoof other machines within Purdue. So I'm not saying we will eliminate spoofing, we will just reduce it. And that's our goal. We, we just want to reduce it to the level when you have an attack, a small portion of that attack reaches the victim. If random spoofing is involved, if the attacker is target spoofing, then he has some chance to find good addresses to spoof. Okay, so um, looking at trout-based filtering effectiveness, Park's work showed that 18.9 deployment percentage gives us about 96% uh, effectiveness. So 96% of source destination pairs cannot have spoofed traffic at all, which is really great result. And then 88% of ASs cannot spoof anyone, which is another great result. So this looks really good. Um, it turns out that uh, from this analysis, the best place to deploy route-based filtering is the vertex cover of the AS map. And Park's work tried to solve the problem of um, if I could deploy this anywhere, what is the minimum number of points where I should deploy to have very, very strong guarantee that I'm handling spoofing? So this is really strong. I'm, I'm making sure that 96% of source destination pairs are completely free of spoof traffic. Um, vertex cover is a set of points where I should deploy that. And let me show you what the vertex cover is on a very small example. Let's say that I have this map, this is the map of the internet at AS level. Uh, it gets more complex than this, but it, in this example, let's just take this uh, small piece. And uh, I would like to pick nodes so that an, on every link, I have at least one node covering this link. I would like to pick minimum number of nodes so that uh, I still cover all the links, but the number of nodes I picked is minimum. And you see why this is good, because then I have minimum number of deployment points. This is NP complete problem, but uh, a simple heuristic that should let me pick um, small vertex cover that is not really the, the minimum number, but it's close to minimum, uh, works like this. So I'm gonna first choose nodes that connect to the leaf nodes. And I, I, Hope you see that leaf nodes, they have those links that they have to cover. If I choose leaf nodes, I'm getting a lot of nodes in the vertex cover. If I choose the first neighbor of a leaf nodes, then I'm getting slightly less nodes in the vertex cover. And so that's going to be my strategy. I'm going to first choose those nodes that are neighbors of the leaf nodes. And then if any links are remaining, then I'm going to go try to choose the, the rest of the uh, nodes in the vertex cover. So let me choose those that are connected to the leaf. And those are dark blue ones, and then I bolded the links 
that are covered now by those filters. So uh, the remaining link is the one in the middle that is not covered, and I need to choose one of the nodes, either top or the bottom, light blue one, so I'm going to choose the top. And so this would be my vertex cover. I have no guarantee that it's minimal, but it is vertex cover. It's covering all the links. Okay, so now you see that a lot of spoofing here cannot occur. So leaf nodes cannot spoof anyone because filtering is perfect for the leaf nodes. And then dark blue nodes, we are assuming that they are doing ingress filtering. So everyone who does route-based filtering also does ingress filtering. So there's no spoofing there. But there is still remaining spoofing on this picture. Um, and if you look at the light blue node in the middle, it can spoof, let's say, going to the top light blue one. It can spoof this lower node, and it can spoof the blue node on the path. And that's because if you look at the paths between this light blue node in the, uh, on the bottom and the one on the top, and if you look at the path between the middle blue one and the one on the top, you see that those paths overlap. And because they overlap, they're indistinguishable. Um, from the point of view of the, of the filter that where traffic is hitting. So some spoofing will still remain, but a lot of it will, will be handled. <coughs> so the main problem with vertex cover is that 18.9%, while, while this sounds good as a number, it's still a lot of nodes. Uh, today we have around 21,000 ASs in the internet, and the number is constantly growing. So 18.9% is something more than 3,000 ASs. And these are 3,000 chosen ones. So this means I have to approach 3,000 different organizations and tell them, you should deploy this because this is really good. You know, and, and you're helping everyone else by deploying this. And chances are not everyone will do that. So the question that we would like to answer is, how well would route-based filtering work if I can only get like 10 organizations to deploy this? Do I have any benefit or, or do I absolutely have to have a vertex cover? And then the other question is what happens if incoming tables are incomplete? Um, do I still have good effectiveness? And if I don't, then how should I build incoming tables so that I guarantee that they are complete? Okay, so we'll now look um, at some effectiveness measures for route-based filtering. And I'll try to go slowly through this. There are a lot of graphs and a lot of measures here. Uh, but I'll try to go slowly, and then sometimes I'll just ask you to look intuitively at the area of the graph being reduced without really trying to understand what's on the x and y axis. Um, we'll do this consideration looking at the AS map of the internet. So we'll purely look at this graph without any um, simulation. Um, and looking at this graph, we'll look at all the paths from possible zombies while let every machine on the internet be a zombie. So every zombie Z going to every other victim, every other address on the internet being a victim V, and spoofing the address S. Again, S can be any address on the internet. And so we'll look at those triples of Z, V, and S, and we'll see how the number of those triples that is possible is being reduced with filtering. We'll take into account different size of ASs. Uh, Park's work looked at every AS being equal. We will now look at bigger ASs being more important than smaller ASs. So we'll take the size into account. And all our consideration will be at the IP address level. Uh, we will evaluate filtering on AS map. I keep on talking about this AS map, and I should tell you how this is built. Uh, Route Views project is a publicly available database of BGP information from several BGP routers. And if you look at this information, there are AS path, uh, there is AS path portion of this information that you can use to build AS map. So you can see 